Penny, welcome to the program. Let me ask you something. When you decided you were going to step onto the scene at Memphis, your former school, did you know this is how I was going to have to do this in order to make any noise at all, never mind have a good basketball team? Well, I mean, for sure. Uh, I think that I understood what I was getting into, had a lot of respect for the job, and uh, I also understood that I had built relationships over the years and felt like I could get on the recruiting, recruiting trail with a good staff and, uh, and really make some noise. Do you think that there's something fundamentally wrong with the way that a lot of different guys recruit? Because to me, I see Penny, and I see the way that you apparently relate to the kids you're getting in, but other people look at it as perhaps unfair, perhaps outside of the way that the system goes. How do you look at what you do versus what other people do? Well, I can only speak on what I do, and that's basically just to be real with kids. Uh, we really uh, got involved with the relationships of being on the phone for countless hours, FaceTiming, uh, really giving the kids a lot of attention, and also giving them a plan. They just want to know a plan of what you really want to do with them and where they're, where they're going to be uh, in the future with your program and what's going on with you. And we were just transparent about everything. I can't speak on anybody else's uh, college and how they recruit, but for us, you know, obviously we're NBA players, former NBA players, and ultimately that's where the guys really want to go. So what you're saying is that the what many people have called the Coach Cal method of not being remotely, you know, silent about the fact that we're here to get you the pros is something that you've adopted your way, or, you know, what, what are you getting at with what, re what really is real? Excuse me. Well, well I think that, um, you know, Coach Cal does a phenomenal job. Uh, he's the guy that was here in Memphis that did an amazing job for us. Uh, I spoke to Cal maybe almost a month ago about him, you know, basically blazing the trail for uh, having an opportunity for a guy like myself to come in and say, hey, if you want to get to the NBA, which most of these guys want to, uh, that we can, we're capable of doing it. You know, playing, uh, being the best guard in the league during my time, uh, first team all NBA, uh, that, that kind of puts me in a position to say to a guard, hey man, if you want to learn how to play the game uh, and get there, I can tell you on and off the court and show you on and off the court. And of course, Mike Miller and Sam Mitchell and Tony Matlock, guys that have played college basketball and NBA with Sam Mitchell and, uh, and Mike Miller, they can show you the same, some similar things as well from their positions. Stepping away from the recruiting scale for a little bit, just getting back to Memphis in general. I mean, how has the Memphis community responded to not only you coming back, but really giving some hope, you know, from a success standpoint uh, in general in terms of on the court? Yeah, the city's on fire. Uh, the city understands. Uh, we've been here before during the Cal years uh, and haven't been there in a while, pretty much since he's left. Uh, and uh, for them to get, for us to get the number one recruiting class in the country, and, and show that promise. We still have a lot of work ahead of us, but to have the, the talent to do so, the city is, is, is on fire and very happy. For some of the people who don't know who these top recruits are, let them know who you got coming in and who's going to be on the scene once Memphis is the court. Well, you know, most noticeably, noticeably uh, James Wiseman, uh, the number one player in the country, uh, Precious Achiwa, uh, who was, I think, a top, well, he's a top 15 kid uh, that's coming in, uh, Lesser Quinones, uh, as a shooter, a lot of people don't know about Lester, but they will know soon. Damian Ball, DJ, DJ Jeffries, uh, who is a, is a top 25 kid. Malcolm Dandridge. We have, a, we have a crew of kids that are coming in that are going to make a mark, make their own marks, and, uh, and, and want to be champions. So you're going to the Final Four? I can't make any predictions. I just know that we have, we have a good, good enough, as good a talent as anyone, and it's up to us as a staff to try to bring that together as fast as we can. Penny, I'm kidding. I was just messing with you. You were a guy that when you were in the league had one of the most outstanding I know, I personalities. <laughs> had one of the most outstanding personalities in a following. And that was the last thing I was going to ask you about. How much do the kids really care? Not care is not the word I want to use because you're per you, who you are is obviously important. But what do they really know about who Anthony Hardaway was when he was an NBA basketball player? Well, I don't know. I think YouTube does me a huge favor by being able to go on YouTube and look at some of my old film. But I don't think they really knew me before I really started at the university as, as much. I think now that I've been at the university, been on a, a bigger stage again since the NBA, been on this stage, that they really look, look at uh, a lot of my old photos or old videos and their parents or relatives or coaches show them old videos. And uh, they know quickly who I am and, uh, and what I achieved in the league. And they trust that. They, they, they say, hey, well, who could I learn better from uh, if I want to play this position than, than Coach Hardaway because he played the position at the highest level. He's Penny Hardaway. He's an NBA legend. And he's the Memphis basketball coach. Thank you very much, Penny. Thank you. Thank you for having me.